wonderful to see y'all again. <laughs> Hopefully it's wonderful to see us. Uh, so this week, uh, we've been actually doing a lot. Uh, we do have a surprise coming up. You'll, you'll get to see that coming soon. We had a chance to not so much take part in, but film a gastronomic event that's going on here in Salinas this week. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the the city of uh, Salinas is basically hosting a, a small gastronomic event to help increase food tourism in Salinas. So posted a video, a short video earlier this week uh, that introduced a few of the people that are involved. Like we said, the event is for the education. It had, so some of it has to do with uh, education. There are students involved who are learning new techniques from different cooking uh, schools and for the public and for tourism to learn about some of the the history of and culinary arts of yes. of Ecuador and the coast and um, there's just some of everything actually in this event it just so happens that a family that we know who has a restaurant uh, a cafe is involved you know we were invited and uh, honestly if we weren't invited we probably would have gone anyway because the signs were everywhere, and I uh, kind of couldn't miss it. So to start on Friday, no, actually Thursday was the beginning of the, of the event. It was Thursday evening. Friday, we got a chance to go and see some of the vendors and a couple of the presentations that they were having. It's at a nearby hotel here in Salinas. We got a chance to, was it was the first vendor we went to? Yes, it was the, the first vendor we yeah. went to. Um, they make a lot of products with chocolate. Yeah. Um, they have chocolate bars. They have 100% chocolate cocoa bar that looks like a gold bar wrapped in gold foil, but look like looks like a gold bar. Um, they have whiskey, wine, balsamic vinegar, uh, salad dressing, a tea. It's it's a lot of product. They even have a champagne. Yeah. That's really really good. Infused with chocolate. Infused it's, with chocolate, like it blew our mind. Yeah, yeah. And it's not even like a hint of chocolate. Like it's, it's, it's a fairly prominent flavor in everything. Yeah, and it's end. really good. Yeah, it's delicious. There was another vendor who uh, is a supplier of honey, uh, and of course he was trying to tell us, you know, what he does and how it is natural. We didn't understand most of it. <laughs> it was very tasty. And we we're planning on going back to get a jar because he wasn't there when we went, we went back today, this morning. But there was another vendor who has a jelly made from bananas. Yeah. You know, at first we were like, uh, what was it, gel, uh, banana? Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. I didn't even know what it was made of until I got ready to eat some. You had already tasted it. I can't remember. It, it, it was made with, I know bananas is in it. And then he had another one that is uh, arroz and leche condensada, which is condensed milk. Very good. It reminds us of uh, morocho, because yeah. we both like morocho. Just doesn't have the raisins and cinnamon, but... It was pretty good. Very good. And it, it goes great on crackers, toast, whatever you decide you want to put on is very good. It's a nice... Um, the jam. Mean. He said it was jelly, but oh. it could be marmalada. Yeah. I don't know, but he said jelly. Okay, welcome to our stand. Uh, we tried to to bring the the recipes from my grandmother, yeah, from my from my dad and from my mom. This is a a banana jelly, okay. And the other dessert is uh, arroz con leche. It's called arroz con leche. It's rice with milk. It's very uh, sweet, but not too much that you can uh, you you won't stop <laughs> tasting it. Yeah, gracias. And you can also find us in Instagram bajo under Delicias Nonos account. We are here in this in this car. In this deli, Tukai, Charles, and also Bayanita. Bread, um, I think it was Gaspan, uh, is the vendor. Wonderful bread, delicious. 
uh, that was very, very good. We bought a uh, loaf, and half of it is already gone. <laughs> that so, was yesterday. <laughs> that was yesterday. And another vendor, so um, pe uh, pecans, nuts. Yeah. So you got your almonds, walnuts. I think she had craisins, and she had this hard candy that had almonds in it. That candy is so hard, it sounds like rocks yeah. in the bag. And it takes a while for it to dissolve before you can... Yeah, you can't just bite into it. No, don't break your teeth, please. Those, those uh, Easter eggs? They got almonds in it, I think. Oh. Even though you want to, because you're so used to eating like M&Ms, it's, it's hard. It has a shell like M&M, but it's harder. Yeah. And you want to just bite it? No, don't do it, because I thought I was going to break my teeth. Yeah. Now that we've gotten your mouth all watered, So one of the products we bought was the banana jelly. Very tasty. And there was another vendor, the one we was talking about with all the chocolate, it's called Aphrodisiac. So this is their tea. Steve loves it. He doesn't drink tea, but if it's flavorful, um, if it doesn't taste like regular, regular tea, tea, I'll drink it. He'll drink it. Now, they do have two different things for dressing. Like, this is a balsamic, balsamic vinaigrette and a pineapple cacao salad dressing. You can use it as a dip or for your salads. The number one thing we like the most is the creamy whiskey so good and she put bits of chocolate inside of it when she let us taste it oh, when i tell you amazing yeah it was kind of crazy how and good that, it was now we tried the champagne i'm not a big fan of champagne but it was more of a spumante um it was really good like had, a sparkling wine had a really strong taste of uh, chocolate and the wine was awesome too. Very. Yeah. small pieces of chocolate that they let us taste white chocolate yeah. and a regular chocolate the chocolate bar yeah the 70 did we taste the 70 and the 100 yes yeah. no we didn't taste the 100 we only taste the 70 oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so so that was yesterday and this morning we went back to actually get these products this morning we plan on going back again this evening this evening to so, hear about the history of the museum the sumpa the sumpa um, if I, if I remember, I'll put that picture of that museum up here. Um, we actually ran, ran into the, a lady. the chef, Chef Melena Diaz Garcia. We are going back later. There's supposed to be some things going on, like some uh, some dancing and some more uh, presentations up until I think eight o'clock tonight. We'll be going back this evening, and uh, we'll have some more footage from that event, and uh, we'll be right back.
we're back. It's evening. It just so happens to be drizzling outside, so we're not out on the porch. LaShawn. Yes. We got a chance to experience some more culture of the country. Yes. Some dishes, uh, traditional dance. Yes. Uh, so today is the last was the last day of the event. Like we said previously, we went this morning and got a few items that we wanted when we went yesterday and came back this evening. Went and back this evening. We went back this evening <laughs> and uh, there was a chef uh, doing a presentation. They have presentations like every hour. And he was cooking some traditional foods that we got a chance to taste. <laughs> It was really good. And uh, after that presentation, uh, we got another presentation about traditional cooking and food. And LaShawn, would you like to go into that? That was the presentation about the Inti Rami, the Festival of the Sun that is held in Cusco. Peru? Sure. Yeah, Cusco, <laughs> Peru. And it's one of the biggest celebrations they have in, every year, and it's around June 23rd or 24th. And so you'll see the guy, you'll see clips of him talking about the tradition they have where they bury the food, they have traditional dances, and it lasts for six days, I think. It lasts for six days. They hold it on the hottest day of the year, which they consider to be June 23rd or the 24th. So it's around those dates because some other areas of Ecuador hosted or hold the festival on June 21st. So let's, let's just say June 21st, June 25th. And it, I think it's like for the U.S., it's the first day of summer. Um, afterwards, we uh, got a presentation from a gentleman who was basically explaining the festival of Mama Negra. The, the story of Mama Negra is on the surface, as an American, we might immediately, especially as black Americans, we might immediately see it as something offensive. Yes. But it's totally not seen that way here. And what I mean by that is like the, the, the lead, the head person in the, in the celebration or the parade will be in blackface. It'll be a man in dressed as a woman in blackface. But it's not seen here the way that we would see that in the U.S. It's actually like, it's a huge honor here to be the person chosen to lead the parade as Mama Negra. Which um, means? Which, okay, so that tradition, the, the funny thing is there is no like one solid explanation for where this tradition came about. But I will say that it's basically a mix of indigenous traditions and culture, Catholicism, and slavery, African slavery. The version of the story that you know we tend to believe is the one about um, the uh, Spanish when they were leading enslaved men and women from one area, and I forgot it's like. Le- 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 Lechunga? Le, it's like Lechunga. I, I La put it up here. I'm always messing it up. Yeah, we, we do. <laughs> uh, but anyway, leading the slaves from one uh, city to another, the indigenous people would pray to the Virgin of Mercy. Ecuador freed the slaves in 1854, I believe. And the that image of the free black woman who was able to lead her own life now kind of became... It, it kind of blended in with the traditions and the, the Catholic beliefs and became like a huge celebration, especially in, the, in that part of the country. Um, and it's celebrated every year, twice a year, actually September and November, which is multiple reasons for that. But if you get a chance, I, we are definitely no experts on this. Google Mama Negra in Ecuador, and you'll you'll probably get five different explanations as to where it came about. But yeah, do you know do some research? It is really interesting. Uh, I'm definitely now intrigued, and I, I probably will have to go do a lot more research. And the set, I think the festivals, uh, the first one's already passed September, 
and then next month we probably won't be able to make that. But I definitely will want to make one of these uh, parades, hopefully next year, um, and learn as much as I can beforehand. All of the chefs that were involved in the uh, Gastro Mundo event were all given certificates. It, there was a bunch of them. So they all got a chance to come up, get certificates, get their picture. Uh, the mayor was there and uh, you know everyone was happy. It was awesome. And right after that, they cleared the floor a little bit and the dancers came out. They did a traditional dance. I wish I knew the exact meaning of the dance or where it originated. Uh, but I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to try to guess, but it was a cool dance and we're going to have some footage of that. And for the final presentation, a woman that we recently met, but is so friendly. We feel like we've known her for well, a we while. Well, we met a lot of people we met a lot at of people. this event yeah. that was very helpful. There was Chef Martha, very friendly, mm -hmm. Angelica. Angelique, yeah, Angelica, Angelique. Angelica Jacqueline. <laughs> she was very helpful. We yeah. met her on the first day we were there, mm -hmm. and she was she's she was there today, and she helped us, you know, understand what was going on, yeah. especially your and Monica and Monica. Monica, yeah, Monica speaks perfect English, and uh, she was actually just kind of walked up to me and started explaining what, what was, was some happening. some of, some of the things that were being said. Yeah. Uh, which is cool. And then she, you know, she offers today, if you ever need my translation services, you know, just hit me up. You know, I'm, I'm available. I was like, okay, thanks. You know, and you know, people are really friendly. Very helpful and friendly, like you said. And it was a great event, mm -hmm. you know, and we were invited like from the beginning when we talked about uh, our friend Elena and her family, Jefferson, her husband, and uh, they were one of the presenters. Her son, Jefferson, was one of the presenters. Mm hmm in the event so it was an honor to be invited mm -hmm. and we learned a lot and it just goes to show you this country is very welcoming to foreigners yeah oh and we the last chef oh i'm sorry, sorry. the forgot. last chef <laughs> was chef melena diaz garcia right who we just recently we met, met the day we saw the event on the malecon right right and she was just super friendly super yes. friendly you know, so she got to do a presentation about the cultural history of food in Ecuador. And it was uh, it was awesome. It like was, learning, learning what people ate before colonialism. Right. Like she stated there was no onions or garlic. Right. Before. And that was I don't even think that had to do with colonialism. It was just like it didn't, just, exist. It didn't exist here. Basically. Right. And uh, how, how they, they, how they how didn't they, drink milk. Right. And what, how, what the milk she, came from. uh so what she, the way she explained it is that, like, you know, they didn't have almond milk or dairy milk or stuff like that. They got what they used in substitute for leche was these uh, potatoes. And they're called, uh, one of, I think they're called the samba potatoes. They're, like, kind of native to this region. And they're really watery. So she had some peel, put it in a blender, put, put a little water in there, blended it up. And it, it looks like milk when you blend it up. Exactly. And, you know, she just poured it through a strainer uh -huh. and used that in her dish. Uh, she made a cosuela, which, which was they, originally used with. They they originally used. Let me back up. The cosuelas now, which is a dish I love. I've mentioned this before. Uh, it uses plantains as kind of a base. The originally they use uh, squash, so like you know gourds basically, to as the base. And she made one with pumpkin. With, with uh, like pumpkin. Mm -hmm. And. She threw some shrimp in there. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. She gave everybody a, a taste. A and she was using a leaf because... Yes. Plastic. I, well, I no, don't obviously, know. Obviously, like spoons I know she, didn't exist. Yes, yeah, spoons <laughs> didn't exist. So it was like they ate off of leaves. <laughs> Everything was amazing. Yeah. It really was. It was a great two-day event for us mm -hmm. because we missed the first day because it was late and it, it started like in four in the afternoon and he couldn't find it <laughs> and i could yeah I, and the thing is i was in the right place i was in the right place and i just didn't go up these stairs because I, I just assumed i was like well there should be something out here telling me where to go yeah i messed up so yeah <laughs> but, i missed the first one but it was a great uh two-day event and it gave us something to do, and we definitely learned something, and we made some new friends. Yeah. So there's definitely nothing wrong with that. <laughs>
Yeah. So if you if you happen to come here and you get invited to some event, you know, don't uh, you don't don't necessarily brush it off. We don't always brush things off, but you you might meet a lot of really nice people and you learn and something. learn. You'll definitely learn something. So that was our event for this yesterday week. and today. Yeah. And we we are so happy to share it with you because it was shared with us. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, if you're ever in Ecuador and you're invited to an event, please go. Please show your yeah. your support. Yeah, an Ecuadorian event is what we mean. I'm yes. sorry. Yes, <laughs> Ecuadorian event. Yeah. So please go and share your support. They are definitely very very welcoming. Yeah. And happy to see you. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? To yeah. see that you're interested in being there, supporting them, and supporting their event. Yeah. Until next time. Yeah. Make sure you check out other channels. Uh, link will be in the description. And we will see y'all next time. Like, share, and subscribe. That's right. Bye.